As you all know, I am detoxing my apartment, making it as clean and happy and comfortable as possible. And one of the big principles um, that I think a lot of people have heard of is this idea of feng shui, getting the energy in a place um, sort of sorted. Now it's a very intricate science really in many ways. And I'm here with Nicole, who is a building biologist, but she's also a feng shui expert. You also train all of the experts around Australia. So um, pretty much one of the, uh, the best people in the business to ask the five things that we can all do to feng shui our homes in five minutes. First thing is get rid of the clutter. The clutter yep. represents the past, apart from the fact that it's a dust hazard as well. Um, so it's very important to go through all your things, especially start with your clothes because it's the most personal. Go through it and if in doubt, get rid of it. Chuck it out. Chuck it out. Um, really interesting thing that you picked up on last time we met, which was a couple of years ago, is the idea of having clutter spilling out from the top cupboard. A lot of people have lots of stuff up high. Yes. Um, and, and, and also stuff under their beds, shoved under their beds. And you said some interesting things. About, about that. Yes, hidden clutter. Clutter you think you haven't got when you've got clutter. <laughs> that can have a lot of impact on in terms of, especially if it's under the bed, you can store it in the body and feel sluggish in the morning. So that's not recommended. But hidden clutter, depending on where it is in the house, can affect certain areas of our life. So if it's in the north sector, it could affect career, where it's like there's clutter there, we'll yep. you're worried about aspects. Of and stuff up high is this idea of it falling like, on top of you, stuff right. raining down the top of you. So um, I found that really effective and it actually made a lot of sense mm. when you said it. Now, furniture placement. Very important with furniture placement that you, wherever you spend time and space, that you have a solid wall behind you. So for example, with your office or desk, it should have a solid wall behind you, the desk in front of you, so you can see who's coming through into the room and that you're supported in what you're doing. It means you're less likely to procrastinate in the position I okay. have. So what about colour in your bedroom? I know that you said that there's a couple of things that you can do just to make like, this more peaceful environment to sleep in. Yes, look, I love colour. I think colour brings, really brings a home together. Uh, and the psychology of colour is also very interesting. There are certain colours you shouldn't be using, uh, especially in children's bedrooms like red, especially if they have ADHD. Yeah. But can, uh, children can get away with more primary colours and they resonate and are attracted to that. So that's really important that they have that with them. And by the way, have more clutter in the room because they're naturally changing their mind all the time and the clutter they reflects They're allowed to be crazy. Yes. Yeah. With adults, pastel colours are better rather than the primary colours. However, look, occasionally a splash of, of red and things like that can work really well in a bedroom. But you don't want something that's too stimulating. It depends what you want the function of that room to be. Yeah, okay. And what about, I guess, one last tip that you can share with us that, I mean, I really love plants. Is there a particular plant or structure that you can sort of put in your home that everybody, I guess, can benefit from? Peace lily is the best in terms of indoor air quality. And okay. it's difficult to kill. You obviously need to water it, but yep. uh, it's probably the best indoor air plant that you can have in terms of improving indoor air quality and absorbing formaldehyde from, you know, NDF particle board furniture and things. Okay. The other 